Hey guys, welcome to Sketch Today. I want to kick things off by just saying thank you so much for all of the suggestions and the support. I posted on Monday asking for ideas about what to sketch and what you guys wanted to see and you have not failed to deliver. So thank you so much. If this is your first time, definitely hit that subscribe button and turn on alerts. That's the little bell that'll get you notifications when we go live. And today I will be going live at 5 p.m my time, which is 4 p.m. Pacific. So you'll definitely want to hit those alerts. Okay, today I'm going to answer a question from Antonin who wanted me to sketch something made of glass and kind of show how I approach that. So I'll do two things. I'll do a bottle and a glass vessel of some sort. So if you need ideas on materials, those will be listed in the description below and it's a great way to support what we do here on the channel. In fact, if you go to sketchaday.com slash stuff, I actually go beyond what's listed here and tell you a little bit about my studio and the things I love to use and all of that. But I've got my cheap Ohuhu markers here today. If you missed that video, check it out as well. They're a great value and no, they have not paid me to say that they're actually a pretty good value and a pretty good deal. So I'm going to start by sketching out a simple glass and we'll do a bottle as well. Maybe I'll do them next to each other. So lips here and let's go a couple lines like this. Here's the bottom of the glass like so. Nice little tumbler you could say. And let's go ahead and sketch in some sort of bottle. Okay. So just being careful that the ellipses here, the higher up I go, the tighter these ellipses need to be to represent that change in perspective. But just going kind of freestyle here with my lines. So these are next to each other. I love actually doing still life drawings when I can. I feel like they, they kind of keep you sharp and uh, You know, drawing is really just about, I think, creating symbols of what we see and being able to represent those in an efficient, well, I shouldn't say drawing, but more so design sketching, a simple and efficient way. All right, to mix things up, let's go ahead and throw in some sort of fabric here behind all this, and this can serve as a background. We'll get back to, to this guy and making it feel like fabric, but wanted to kind of start with these bottles. Okay, so a couple things with glass, at least that I've noticed, is one, this actually feels a little bit off, one, on the corners or edges, we're gonna get some darkening happening, okay? So throwing in a couple lines for the thickness of the material, that's totally okay. And then in the base here, you know, if this has some liquid, for example, We'll just say it's water or apple juice. And the liquid, the glass, all of these things are gonna play off of each other. So my first step here is I like to take black and kind of just establish areas on this glass that are occluded. And occluded just means that perhaps this glass vessel or object is taking on um, elements in the environment and those things are kind of compressed and showing up in the glass as just these really intense dark spots. So I like to start there wherever I can and even in the edges of the object. So if you look at a glass, something made of glass, just slightly off the edge here, just putting in some nice dark marks on the rim as well like so, and you can already get a sense for kind of these refractive or uh, occluded elements in this bottle and in this glass, just by not quite going to the very edge of the bottle, okay? But just a little bit off the edge here. Now, I'll just throw in a dark line on the bottom, like so, we'll apply some other marker as well, just to make sure things are feeling pretty good. Now I'm gonna work on the lid here because I neglected to kind of finish this off. And the thing that's really bugging me about this is it's not quite centered. So I'm gonna correct a little bit of that. Throw some lines on the cap here. Keep it sketchy. Because this is sketch a day after all. Not perfect drawing a day. 
All right. Now, the bottle is gonna be treated a little bit differently than the liquid itself. So I need to think about what color this liquid is and how the color of this fabric in the background as well kind of plays off things, okay? So let me just sketch in a couple folds and elements there. And I'm just being careful to, you know, not have these lines necessarily intersect, but respect and preserve the white space next to the limit of the object, as I can see it here. All right, so the next thing I wanna do now, when I'm working with this glass, I need to decide on a glass color. So for example, if this is a green bottle of some sort, I'm just gonna take this green marker here, this green Ohuhu marker, and just kinda of give myself a base color or tone, right? This is gonna be transparent, translucent, but I do want to establish a little bit of base color and I'm being careful to, as I apply the marker, draw with my shoulder, but also make sure that I am working light until I get it right. Now these are alcohol based markers. So depending on the tool you're using, you'll just want to be careful to um, make sure you're not using ballpoint pen, for example, because that's going to kind of mess things up a little bit. All right, so first layer, a little translucent, second layer here, and maybe we have a little bit of a label kind of showing, for example, if this is some sort of beverage bottle. Let's go ahead and sketch in a label, okay? That's going to obscure a part of the fabric in the scene behind the label, but that's okay. All right, now the next thing I like to do is kind of map out where my reflections and my highlights are going to be on this thing. So the highlights, I'll do those in white, but I do want to get the reflections in, and I need to make sure I have some intense color for those reflections. Now the reflections are really just representing, again, things in the environment that might be reflected by this shiny bottle. Okay, so we can put a couple lines in here and just even under the cap, maybe we have a nice strong shadow. Even on the other side of the bottle, we're going to have some of these uh, reflective elements or things happening, but I do need to build the toll, the tone rather, of my shading here. Now I am using a green gray, so I'll use some green, blues, reds, things like that. We wanna capture the reflectivity and the interplay of the light throughout the scene. So I'm gonna continue with this green and just kind of work. Even though it's a glass and transparent bottle, you're gonna get that shadow core, okay, happening, right? So we'll put some streaks here. I think my marker is starting to dry out, which is impressive. I've been really going hard on these markers for the last little bit. So kind of cool, kind of fun. All right, so I'll do something like that and then just continue to build these values, right? So where I have my shadow core on the inside of the label, for example, I'm gonna make that a little bit darker. And I wanna preserve, you know, let's say this just has some brown liquid inside of some sort. I can now take something like, I'll start with this yellow or maybe this brown marker and just kind of shade in on top of the green like so, all right? And that's gonna be my liquid on the inside. Now, because we have this kind of brown liquid, I am gonna get also refraction happening in the liquid. And this is just something you kind of have to learn from your observational drawing, but even in the glass here, I'm trying to respect the fact that light is passing through this liquid and it may interact with the glass as well. Okay, so paying attention to the light, light source, I'm assuming or imagining it's coming from the top and to the right here, I wanna make sure that I am picking up some of this extra reflection or refraction happening in the glass as the light kind of interplays with things here. So continuing just to build value on this bottle, 
you know, in some of these areas and just making sure that I have some artifacts. I have things that, again, might be in the environment that are reflecting here. And, and this is just something you kind of have to learn by doing that observational drawing, paying attention to what you see and seeing if you can replicate that in your sketches. All right, so I just wanna create some separation on the top of this liquid on the base here as well. And I may even go ahead and darken things like this backside, right? Just on the bottom of the bottle. So paying attention to, again, where you're putting those occlusions, highlights, and so forth, that's gonna help you uh, create a scene that feels somewhat realistic. Now, one thing I did neglect to do is just kind of give this a base tone. So I'm gonna take this cool gray one marker here and give the ground just a nice base light gray, okay? And if I'm careful, I can do things like imply a little bit of a reflection with how I'm shading this, just ever so subtle. But this is gonna give me a base with which I can create some lights to further separate these from the page, okay? So it's gonna kinda set the stage. So a nice Copic wide cool gray one just to help all this pop. And you might not see it so well on camera, but it's there and it's important. And I'll show you why in just a second. All right, let's get to this glass up front and let's just assume that the same liquid is in this glass. So that being said, I'm gonna actually reduce the level of the liquid and take the same marker like so and just go ahead and start shading in. Okay, we'll shade in the bottom and the top just real quick, okay, like so and just a couple kisses, if you will, of that brown being reflected into our main glass here. And on the bottom, I wanna blend out a little bit with this gray. So I'm gonna go ahead and shade in the bottom with a cool gray two. Just fill that in. And now we have a nice kind of tone there on the bottom, okay? So the glass itself, same thing, couple lines on the front and on the back side here, I'm gonna go ahead and shade in just the inside of the glass, nice and gray. You know, maybe there's things in the environment, whatever <laughs> lighting that we need to capture through that. All right, so I do need to get the back. Like I said, I'm gonna imagine this is some sort of red fabric. And if it is a red fabric, this bottle is really bugging me. I'm gonna have to try and fix that a little bit here. Um, but let's just assume it's some sort of red fabric, okay? So let me switch to the chisel tip, and I'm just gonna use the chisel tip of the marker to directionally shade and do it in a way that respects how I feel the fabric might be moving in this scene, okay? So sometimes my stroke will be like this, and I'll even shade through the liquid just a little bit, like so. Okay, just trying to be careful of how this fabric might be represented in the scene. Okay, so we have our label here. We have the brown liquid. I'm gonna pick a different red marker to finish that off. But again, just trying to be respectful of the flow and shape of the fabric in the scene, but also being quick and deliberate with those strokes. All right, maybe something like that, okay? Got our nice red fabric there, and we'll add some value to kind of help help this feel more three-dimensional, things like this. It's a little darker red. Just like that. The top of the fabric is going to be lighter. meaning where it's facing upward toward the light. So just trying to be respectful of that as I apply these strokes as well. All right, so we're making some progress here. Need to get a little darker with the red. All right, so I've got this darker red marker and now a couple hits and I can 
just help this feel a bit more depth or give it a bit more depth rather the red fabric itself and we'll we'll revisit the base and make sure we have those reds peeking through i just wanted to make sure that it gave a little little bit of depth and contrast to the fabric here all right so that's looking pretty good now and now i want to address a bit of the color mixing that's happening with the liquid here in my beverage bottle so i'm going to continue through with just this light red through here make sure that the brown is blending with the red and you can kind of see it's poking through a little bit so a lot of transparency for me is about making sure that these colors come through where they need to come through and if you're strategic and careful about it because markers are translucent you do want to think about the light that's being cast in certain instances so for example i am going to get a shadow on this surface that's why i went ahead and shaded with the cool gray one so this bottle or this glass rather is going to cast some sort of shadow and a lot of times if you look at transparent or translucent things you not only have shadows being cast but you also have a little bit of light coming through and if the surface here were perfectly dark i wouldn't be able to do this with this white pen and just kind of enhance things okay i can do that on the fabric as well i know the fabric is not the highlight of the sketch here but if i do need to add a few things in white i can do that with this pen just to lighten it up but more importantly on the glass itself or next to the glass right where it's receiving some light these white pens are amazing for just getting your highlights where you need them to help in this case your bottle feel really shiny okay like i said i want to kind of fix part of the bottle here on the right it feels a little bit wonky so let's see if i can do just a little bit here that's going to show through as well forgot that line so we're just a little bit off on this side i may just have to live with it unfortunately but that's okay all right let's get this bottle cap in keep it sketchy keep it loose do the same thing on this label maybe there's a little border or perimeter of some sort some text kind of thing and a couple more lines here just to just to separate the label from the bottle a bit okay and lines on our water as well all right on the top of the water and on the bottle here we're gonna get highlights right so if our light source is coming from the top and the right then I want to make sure that I have some bright spots. Um, I love this Molotow pen, Molotow pen. Um, it's a good way for me to have just some opaque white if I need to throw it on a sketch, something like this bottle. I can do that pretty easily and not have to break out an entire paint setup if I'm just sketching. So if you like doing this kind of drawing, I highly recommend getting a paint pen. Um, like I said, I can, you know, have the light show through on the ground where it needs to. And I'll probably shade in a little bit here and add just with, with a pencil, a little bit of brown. And the reason for that is, again, as the light moves through the scene, we're gonna get some of those tones being cast on that surface. So let me just find, let's see. I just need something that is a yellowish brown. Looks like I found one here. I've got a bronze, I think. Yes, a bronze pencil. Quick sharpen. And now on the ground here, I'm just gonna add little hints of the light, okay, being cast. And even in the reflection here, just making sure I get just a little bit of that bronze or brown coming in. 
on the scene, like so. And I'm gonna just enhance the outline on some of these things like the fabric, you know, a couple lines here, perimeter, shadow and so forth. All right, so just real quick, kind of mocked up, made up still life, but hopefully you guys were able to kind of pick up on a few things here. It's really just about, I think, looking at reality, like opening your eyes, taking a look at what you see and seeing if there's a way for you to um, create symbols out of the things you see and representations that feel authentic to um, what someone might expect to see in real life. So even on this glass, looking at it, I'm like, you know, maybe we'd have a little bit more occlusion here on the bottom and a few more artifacts, things like that. But that really just does help your sketch feel more accurate. Let's throw some white on this side as we may have some reflected light as well. And we can just kind of throw that over the whole thing, just like, ah, oh, you know, maybe there's some secondary reflected light in the scene that's affecting what we see here. So something that you can definitely play with. Um, I think the key with most sketches is just knowing when to stop and that can be sometimes really hard. I think I need to just do a video on knowing when to stop. It's a question I get quite a bit, but the short answer is it's something that just comes with experience, but also something that you kind of learn through trial and error and deciding based on how you work, what the best way to um, work the most efficiently for yourself turns out to be. Just wanna get the back side of the label here and make sure we're nice and dark toward the front. We'll touch up the whites as well, but just wanna make sure that comes through. And now I can hit this with a little bit of that green gray as well. Yeah, that feels a lot better now. So remember when you're working with markers that markers are translucent, meaning the ink you put down, light's able to pass through that ink. So you're not gonna quite get an opaque feel with your inks. So you wanna be thoughtful and conscientious about where um, where you put that ink and when, what part of the process and so forth. All right. Okay. So we're looking pretty good here and I think I'm going to call it good. Like I said, it's real easy to feel like you could keep going, but I think I'm going to call it good. All right, guys. So that's my way of drawing glass things or rather one example. And we did focus on cylindrical things. So I'll be back with more content that focuses perhaps on things that aren't cylindrical or have a uniform wall thickness, for example. But ultimately it's up to you guys to kind of open your eyes, see what you see and figure out ways to kind of work with things like transparency and translucency. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you've made it this far, I really do appreciate it. I love you guys and the comments and suggestions and feedback. It's getting better. It's awesome. We're having fun. Hit that subscribe button, turn on alerts, come say hi on the socials. I am at sketchaday.com and be here Wednesday for our live show at 4 p.m. Pacific, as well as there'll be a show on Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific if you can't make that one. Well, thanks guys. And we'll see you next time right here on Sketchaday.